Okay, so this is Debian 13 running on a Raspberry Pi 5, but this is a little bit different. So this is Volk's PC, and if I press the Windows key, you'll see that it's actually running from within Android. So if we go back to the Linux bit first, and I've got some notes here, let's go full screen with this. The Volks PC Linux desktop is based on Debian and runs as a well-behaved Android application. This desktop application runs full screen with our Android navigation bar. For devices that support touchscreen, users can swipe to access navigation bar. There's also an Android button on the desktop panel to switch to Android. Oh, I missed that. Is that desktop? Mm, must be that. Oh, that's cool. And then back into Linux. Nice. So if I go back to the notes, Debian runs in its own sandbox, but files can be shared with Android by placing them in internal storage. Keyboard mapping, mouse acceleration, there's loads of information here. Initial support for Wayland applications with our Wayland server, Chromium browser and Electron applications. And there's instructions on how to install the Chromium browser. Works with X11. So if I close this down and we'll open the terminal, I don't know if Control-8, Alt and T works. Yes, it does. So... Have we got NeoFetch? Actually, we found that NeoFetch doesn't work. FastFetch. So sudo at install FastFetch. And I'm using this on an 8 gig Raspberry Pi 5. It works on the Raspberry Pi 4 as well. I did show Volks PC years ago, but this is on much faster hardware. I'm using Android 16 and Debian Trixie, so super up to date software. So the password is root. No, it's not. Is it desktop? It's desktop. So yes. And now if I try that again, there we go. So what does it say about it? Oh. So Linux 6.12.49, 1920 by 1080, Wayland. So it talks about the 2.4 gigahertz, the standard Raspberry Pi 5 processor. So memory, we've got 2.2 gig out of 7.75. So let's do a normal update, sudo apt update. And see if that works in the normal way yet. So that's, that works fine. I think I had some problems with the, the old version with certain things not, not working or installing. I can't remember, I've, I'll, I'll link the old video. So we've got a, an update to Firefox coming. So that's all done. And it was, yeah, it was Debian Trixie. I don't know, I'm not sure if I read it out just now. So if I wanted to install sudo at install, I know I always install Xmotor, but I like it. And it generally works with everything. So let's launch that. Oh, SDL create window GLX is not supported. Oh, that's a shame. Let's try free doom. Oh, we're going to have less success with games, more success with uh, with apps or programs. So free Doom. Oh no, you got it's called something else in it when you launch it. I keep doing that. I keep like double tapping on my mouse pad. Right. So applications, games, free Doom. So I don't know if there's any sound because I'm running Android. My sound card doesn't work in quite the same way. So I'm just going to turn the volume down a bit and see if that works right. So, new game. Can we go full screen? We can. New game. Okay, so that works even though Xmoto didn't. I'm, I'm using a touchpad for this, which is not the best, but it still works. So if I quit out of that, so now if I try Xmoto, but try and launch, oh no, of course that does the Android one. If I press the Windows key, it does the Android bit, right, so I need to think about that. Applications and games, and let's see if it does anything with Xmoto without launching it from the terminal. No, it doesn't launch, does it? So what have we got in here? So file manager, free space 95.3 gig. This is a 128 gig SD card. So settings wise, everything looks pretty normal there. Accessories, archive manager, Mousepad for text notes, task manager. There we go. So remember, this is within Android that this is running. So graphics, LibreOffice Draw, image viewer. We've got Firefox as a browser. We've also got YouTube as a separate entity there. Parole Media Player. Yeah, so if we tried LibreOffice Impress, which is the PowerPoint 
equivalent. So if I do candy and open, and okay, and then if we wanted to, so Volx PC. Yeah, well that's working. We can flick through the slides. It feels pretty snappy really. Definitely a lot better than the previous version I tried. Well, that was on a Pi 4. Uh, I like these icons to close everything down. So system, that takes you back to Android Package Manager. So that will be like an App Store, is it? Start Synaptic Package Manager. Password, what was it? Desktop. If I do a search on here for Xmoto, because it suggests a couple of other games, yeah, blob boats. So let's pop that on there. Mark for installation and mark and apply and apply. Yeah, that looks like that's done. So if I go down to the bottom here and go for games, yeah, blob boats, and we can see all our usage and everything here. Oh, although Blob Boats doesn't look like it's worked either. Yeah, couldn't get screen. GLX is not supported. Was there anything in the notes about that? So let's search in the document for GLX. No, it's not mentioned on there. But it did talk about X11. You can still do 100% compatible Zorg client server environment. First install X11 environment from the package manager. After that, you can execute VNC X11 desktop scripts providing the system. And this will start a simple black box window manager based nested x11 desktop that's a bit like i showed in my google pixel video where it was just a, an environment so it wasn't like a full desktop but it was an environment where you can run full apps so should we try something like p sensor sudo apt install p sensor and yes well, that seems nice and fast, doesn't it? So if I launch P sensor, yeah, that works. And is it gonna, yeah, it does find the temperature and everything from that. So if I go back to the desktop and now we can go to all apps and we do, yeah, so there's, there's my Linux desktop. So I can go straight back into that. It's very clever. So let's try that YouTube app and see what that's like. I've lost track now. Is this still, so that's actually using the Android app. But if I was to launch Firefox, yeah, that launches Firefox as a proper desktop browser. So now we go to YouTube. And if we go full screen, it changes those icons, doesn't it? Oh no, we've got different icons now. So Lee, PSP, video, 4K, HDR. Let's just see what it does with this environment running from within Android. I'm going to mute it because I don't know what the sound is doing at the moment. It's probably coming through my capture device. So skip. Oh yeah, that looks alright. So that's already at 720. Oh, and it gives us 4K, which Raspberry Pi OS only gives us 1080 in the latest version. Okay, so 4K was uh, maybe a bit over the top but if we go back to 1080 because that started in 720 and 720 looked all right little bit jerky stats for nerds yeah it's dropping some frames but obviously we can use the youtube from within android so you you know you you'd use this i guess more for giving you a proper desktop browser so when you launch say pbc sport we have a proper desktop and it formats in that way. So not a mobile browser like you get in Android. So really handy. So this works on Android phones and I probably need to look at my Pixel. You do need to root and I use Magisk to root this device. But uh, but yeah, this that's really impressive. So we've got a Volks PC. So I did have some trouble installing this uh, and I followed all the instructions, but I don't, well, I say I followed all the instructions. It might be written that don't use anything but SD card, but I was using an NVMe and lots of things don't work with NVMe, especially the things you do with recovery because it's looking for the operating system in a particular location and it's not there. 
So you need to use an SD card at this stage, from what I can see. So on here, it's got Raspberry Pi 5 APK and works with Lineage OS 23. So this is the AOSP version. So Android 16. So when you go to installation, you need to download, this is the Debian operating system, and this is uh, has got all the necessary things you need. So there's one thing you have to do to recovery, and then you have to root with Magisk, because there's, there's lots of steps to it. So I'll, I might do a video on it. Uh, I have got an older video on Volk's PC, and I think that will still work as long as you're using an SD card, so not an NVMe drive. But if we go to home, so it can transform any Android device into a capable Linux workstation. And there are other devices, so you need a different Android version depending on what you're using. So you can see here Snapdragon 8s. Now I've got a Pixel, what is it, an 8 I think. I'm pretty sure it's a Pixel 8. So I would use this version. There's some others here, look, other Snapdragons, Unisoc. I've also got some Android 14 versions. MediaTek and Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. They, they contacted me to say that this latest version was out. So we've only just had Debian Trixie on the Raspberry Pi as an official release and we've already got it running within Android 16 and loads of mobile phones and Android devices on the market can't support Android 16. The Raspberry Pi has and now we've got Trixie within it. So just to show that Android is still working fine, I've been using the Brave browser which works brilliantly on this. And actually, in my other video, trying to download from the Volks PC site, so this large file installation, yeah, this one here, using Edge and using some other browsers, it wouldn't let you do it. It says you've got to do it on a desktop, but on this, you just hit save and it saves it locally and you can do the installation from there. So actually, the Brave browser I'm really impressed with. So again, if I do BBC Sport, uh, and let's go into that, and let's launch something else to say football. And you can see, it looks really nice, works really well. But this is the, a mobile version of the browser, although it seems to present itself as a desktop version because it did let you download that mega upload file. So I'll be using Brave in the future on Android instead of Edge. I know a lot of people didn't like that. I was using Edge as my browser. I will delete that. Have I got Ada64 in here? I haven't. I've got the Google Play Store on here as well. I've got a separate video on how to install that. So if I do Ada64, here we are, and install. And let's open that up. And then you'll see there's a Raspberry Pi 5 and it's the 8 gig model. So let's shut this down and see if it works on a Pi 500 Plus, which has got the newer D variant chip. It's probably wise to shut that down, isn't it? That Linux. So how does this work? And can you log out as well? So log out. Yeah, power. Oh, that's log out. What, what does that do then? Uh, it looks like it shuts it down. Yeah, so that shuts it down as well. So let's close this down and boot up on the Pi 500. So 128 gig uh, SD card, this is a Samsung Pro. I'm sure they'll be on a great deal on Prime Day. There's all sorts of deals on Amazon at the moment. It helps the channel if you click on any of the links in the description to take you to Amazon, even if you buy something else. So let's launch the desktop. So start desktop and see how fast this goes. Again, this is from SD card. This would be a lot better from an NVMe drive. And if I call up that browser again, because I mentioned this in my recent video about putting um, like a Windows clone on a very old laptop. SSDs are so cheap and actually really good for Raspberry Pis. So if you've got a Pi 4, SSD was brilliant anyway. But look, £12 for a 120 gig SSD. And you can get the USB SATA cables for pretty cheap as well. So the one I use is, yeah, this one, $3.99 uh, for a USB 3 SATA adapter. So for £16, you've got something to run another operating system, whether it's Retropile or something like that. And you can also just get extra drives. So rather than use SD cards, I mean, NVMEs are obviously the best one to use, but they are more expensive. 
And for most things, you know, the fact that I'm running this on an SD card and an SSD is so much faster, they're more than adequate for a Pi. So now if we do Control Alt T, let's have a look at the terminal, and we'll do, in fact, no, it was fast fetch. That's muscle memory there going for Neo Fetch. It picks up the 16 gig and it lists as a Raspberry Pi 500, although it is a Pi 500 plus. And if we do Ada 64, it's snappy. It, it is actually nice and snappy. Uh, so yeah, 16 gig. On oh, this this class is at Raspberry Pi 5. So great work by all at Volks PC. It, it just is cool. I, I actually really like it. So do we have Windows snapping in this? I haven't checked that yet. So file manager. And if we drag that over, no, we don't have Windows snapping in but it does seem to not struggle to multitask. So if we go for the office and get LibreOffice Impress open as well. And let's just open one of those documents. And let's just make that a bit smaller, but not, not tiny. So we can have a few things running at the same time. We've got multiple desktops here as well. When you go to another desktop and then open something up, so if I do the release notes on this one, so there's a second desktop, there's the first desktop, and let's go for the third desktop, and what else can we open? Oh, we've got the package manager, let's open that. Desktop, I need to change that because I'm going to forget that. And I'm guessing changing the password works exactly the same. So if we open the terminal and we do sudo paswd and the password at the moment is desktop, but for security reasons, although it's within Android, so I don't know how accessible it is, uh, it's worth changing it. And then you just retype it. And that's been updated. Yeah, very impressive. It's really cool. And I like this Android button as well. This reminds me of a little chewy tab that I used to have that used to go between Android and Windows. And so to flick between the two, it's instant. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.